This is an exciting day. As you've seen from the title and the thumbnail, it's something very expensive and very exciting. This is the first time I've received a package from AMD. And I want to open this with you. I'm just out of words. Okay, let's go. Antec Performance One Full Tower, the award-winning PC case that offers uncompromised cooling performance out of the box. This is the PC case that we're using for our maxed out video editing PC. I'm super happy with the DIY friendliness and how easy it was to build in it as well as the cable management. It supports radiators up to 420 millimeters, comes with four pre-installed fans, 340 millimeter fans in the front and 120 millimeter fan in the back. They're all 30 millimeters thick and perform incredibly well when shifting air. It supports EATX motherboards up to 285 millimeters and GPUs up to 400 millimeters. In other words, you can fit pretty much anything in there that you want. Next to the front panel IO is a temperature display where we can see CPU and GPU temperatures. A good and quick way to make sure that everything's working well inside the PC case. The build quality is second to none and now it comes in two colors, a black and white. During the holiday season, it's more affordable than ever so check out Antec Performance One Full Tower in the video description below. Ugh. TRX 50. Ho ho. G Skill RAM DDR5 Ardem. Ho, ho, ho. Oh my, oh my. Wait a second. This is one of the most expensive unboxings I have done. Firstly, what we have here is the NZXT Kraken 360mm. What's the exact model number for this? I'm not quite sure, but it's the one with LCD on the front, and this is actually Acertec pump inside, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 7th gen Acertec pump inside, so NZXT fans, but the actual pump, and this is from another company, NZXT has made the fans and then the design of the block there. The more exciting things are here. This is the AMD Threadripper, if you didn't get that already. And a lot of people thought that the Threadripper is a dead platform because AMD's promised uh, an upgrade path to the Threadripper 3000. Because actually Threadripper, not the Threadripper Pro, but Threadripper, the last generation has been 3000. They skipped the 5000 and now they've brought it back with 7,000, but in a whole new way because the Pro and the like, you know, high-end desktop and the Pro lineup, they're uh, kind of mixed. And let me explain that in a moment. This is the Ryzen Threadripper 7980X. 80X, that didn't exist before. We had 90X and we had 70X. 60x and this is 79 70x so this is a 32 core and this is 64 core 64 core 128 thread 32 core 64 thread now i want to unbox this to see this g skill ram inside oh g skill sticker and oh it's not as exciting as i thought okay so here's the RDIM, and there is four 32 gigabyte sticks, so we have 128 gigabytes in total. And this is 6400 megatransfers per second, CL32, 1.4 volts. So that is very interesting. And if I'm not mistaken, the RDIMs run at 12 volts, not 5 volts. Interestingly, when we tested the Intel Xeon, uh, fourth gen Xeon platform, the RAM that they gave us with the Xeon was 6,000 megatransfers per second. Now with Threadripper, we're getting 64,000, which means a little bit of better IMC. I'm excited. And also what we have here is the ASUS Pro WS TRX 50 Sage Wi-Fi. So this is like their Pro lineup with motherboards. And I believe they're probably going to come out with a more like gamery and creative motherboards, maybe even a Pro Art TRX 50, most likely. I don't know anything yet, but this is kind of their like server grade one. We've seen the Sage Wi-Fi's before, you know, with the Threadripper as well as the Xeon, all of them, they're available. Ooh, here it is. I can see some fingerprints in here. Um, 
most likely someone's tested this because this is like the media unit so make sure that this actually works and uh, you know when it goes out but there's two fans in here one two that blow on these heat sinks oh my word are there a lot of things around four dim slots one two three four and if you remember our threadripper pro like the wrx80 lineup then you remember that there was eight dim channels there and here is actually where the difference comes in because now the threadripper and threadripper pro have kind of a mixed lineup because 5000 series only had threadripper pro we didn't have the threadripper 5000 now we have threadripper and threadripper pro and what is the actual difference so then the high end desktop platform is this trx50 and then the pro platform is wrx90 and the CPUs kind of are mix and matchable. So the Pro platform, the WRX90, as you can see here, will only offer the Pro CPUs, not these Threadrippers, what we have over here. But the TRX50 supports also the Pro CPUs as well as the high-end desktop CPUs. So whether you're running a, a 7980X or WX, both of his CPUs can go onto this platform. But there are some downsides. The Pro CPUs will run at eight channel memory, but the Threadripper platform has a quad channel memory, so four channel memory, which is still double what you see on a normal, you know, Intel i9 or a Ryzen 7000 series, Ryzen 9 or something like that. They have dual channel. Now the Threadripper has quad channel, and then the Pro platform, Threadripper Pro, has eight channel memory. In terms of PCIe lanes, there are also a little bit lower than the Pro lineup. In the TRX50, we have up to 92 lanes or 88 lanes usable, but then up to 48, which are PCIe Gen 5. In terms of WRX90 platform, we have 148 and 144 uh, total and usable PCI lanes and up to 128 PCIe Gen 5 lanes. So that means that oh, you're going to get a lot more storage and upgradability or if you need Gen 5, the Pro platform is what you need that for. The Threadripper platform doesn't actually have 128 lanes anymore. It's actually a little bit cut down, which might be a bit of a downside, but it might make these a little bit more affordable as well. So both platforms support overclocking if you're into that and also the processor support I already mentioned there is one supports Pro only and then the TRX50 supports Pro and high-end desktop. Now even though the Pro CPU is eight channels. When you put it to TRX50, it starts to run in quad channel, if that makes sense. So all the pro features you're gonna lose when you take that CPU into the TRX50 platform. But at the same time, you can have 96 core Threadripper Pro 7995WX CPU on the TRX50 platform, so high-end desktop platform. Now you can have the CPUs with up to 96 cores and then i believe you might actually get more pci lanes as well but you're limiting the pci lanes by the motherboard and how they wrote it the, with the motherboard so you know that's a little bit of a downside it says for amd sample not for resale i've never seen that sticker before first time i'm actually doing this comes out in a box like that oh that's very good you're gonna need one of these this is the torch wrench and also this will make it actually able to use the aio like the normal aio mainstream aio from any of the guys because the aio is not actually covering the whole ihs a lot of it's just you know hanging out there so i highly recommend using a dedicated aio or cooler that are meant for this platform even though it's possible to adapt any you know mainstream aio with these bracket here you're gonna get much better cooling when the whole ihs is covered and this is a torque wrench when the socket is tight enough it's just gonna start to click you might have seen it in some of my previous threadripper builds before there we go click click as long as all of the screws click you've got a perfect tightness of these and you don't need to worry about anything else all the pins that you have on your socket that the cpu is not like hanging off of some of the pins but it actually touches all of the pins and the pressure goes 
into all of them because otherwise you might lose some of the memory channels or some of the other bandwidth or whatever so now let's take a look at this cpu what's underneath there oh <gasps> look at that threadripper sticker i have never seen this sticker before and i'm gonna take care of this with big care that's amazing um instructions i don't think anyone's gonna read that this is just for legal purpose can anyone in the comment section tell me if you have read this or not I don't know anyone who reads this. There we go, another Threadripper sock sticker and the same wrench and that on the bottom. So here's the two new Threadrippers now. And very importantly, this 7000 series Threadripper is not compatible with the previous generation of Threadrippers. So if we've got this one here, this is the 5995WX. We're gonna take a look if, if it's any different. I mean, by the looks of it, yeah, the IHS is the same size. Slightly different though. The corners curve a little bit more on the 5000 series compared to the 7000 series here. They all come with these orange brackets and you shouldn't remove them. You don't need to remove them. The CPU will just slide into the socket with this frame. It's a carrier frame, but the actual CPU you can see underneath, they are just like that, like a four squares there. Oh my word, that looks absolutely amazing. They have quite a bit of weight to them as well, holding these here. So this is the 7980X because this now, the 80 is the one with a 64 core variant. The 80 is the one that they added because now the, you know, 7995WX or the, the 9 version is actually the one with 96 cores and this 80 is with 64 cores. And here's the actual difference between the previous generation, 64 core, and then the new generation, 64 core, even though they're slightly different. Let's take a look underneath as well. Oh, here's the big difference now. You can see underneath why it is different. The pin layout was different. Oh, I need to clean this. There's a bit of thermal paste on the old one there. But I wanna do is also actually test the weight of these, because I think they might be a little bit heavier than before. So if you're looking at the old Threadripper, the old Threadripper weighs 137.5 grams. If we're looking at the Xeon, that's a little bit lighter, 129.5. But now the new Threadripper is 164 grams. So we've added about 30 grams of weight. And let me see if the 60 four core and the 32 core are exactly the same weight yeah exactly the same weight so there's more silicon you get more silicon with this more sand with your new cpus okay i mean this has been super super exciting and now what we're gonna have to do is actually get some things built i've got an awesome motherboard here i've got very interesting uh, parts all laying around so it's time to build it and let's see uh what these threadrippers are actually made of to make the test bench and uh, you know test them oh did i also tell you that this threadripper now boosts up to 5.3 gigahertz on the 32 core and uh, 5.1 on the 64 core cpu that's uh that's pretty insane is this time to swap platforms and move back to well not move back to but move to Threadripper. let me know what software or benchmarks you'd like to see in the description below if there's anything extra you'd like to see um and um, i'll speak to you very very soon